I want to examine this jagged array versus the multi-dimensional version. We saw these in the previous video, but I want to look at these side by side. Jagged here is actually a single dimensional array. I'll draw here to the left. It's a single dimensional array of items that reference other arrays, which we saw in the previous video. So this is sub-zero. It will reference this new int array. And this int array is also single dimensional. So we kind of have this multi-dimensional fill to it, except it's a single dimensional array that references other arrays. That's what this syntax means here. And these arrays don't have to be the same length. They have them the same length here, but I can certainly come down here and add grandpa, or that's grandma, and then grandpa back in. Control shift B, you see that the build succeeds. With this multi-dimensional version, or sometimes called rectangular version, the reason why it's rectangular is if I highlight all the items, items in here, it makes a rectangle. Okay, if it was square, it'd be like a 3x3 three three or a 4x4, four four, but that's rectangular. All of the arrays, quote-unquote arrays, in a single dimension must be of the same length. For example, this is a three-dimensional array of six-dimensional arrays. And it's not jagged, it's very rectangular. If I try to come in here and add grandma on Control-Shift-B, the build fails, and we get this error list popping up in front of our face way too large. I'm not sure why the error list is up there. Let's move it back down here where it belongs. I think we're good. So all of our dimensions must be of the same length. And this is also a single array. Okay, it's considered multidimensional. You can see the rectangular here with the comma, whereas the jagged, we actually say, hey, it's an array that stores references to others or other arrays, whereas this is a single array, and we denote the dimensions using the comma. And, and right here we have a comma, whereas here we have multiple angle brackets. Let's see if we can iterate over these arrays and display them. We'll use a for loop, and then we'll do it also with a for each. So for uh, tab tab int i, i less than parties, jagged dot length. And then let's do another array, since we're doing two dimensions, we have to do another loop, sorry, for int j, j less than parties, jagged. Give me the array at party sub i and tell me its length. And then in here, let's get this error list off there, zoom out a little bit. Hopefully you're turned up to high definition. In here, let's add another closing curly and do console right line to add a new line there. And then console dot write parties sub jagged sub i sub j plus a space here. I'm actually going to remove this set of curlies here because they're not absolutely required. And bring this in, control K D. Alright, let's 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 run this. You can see, oh yeah, that looks very much like our jagged array. Here's our data over here. Here's our jagged data over there. And notice the indexing here. I say, hey, party sub jagged, give me the array reference at sub i. So what I've highlighted here returns a reference to another array, whichever array we're accessing at the time. And then inside of that array, I want to access the jth item. All right, four arrays here. There's one array to hold the reference to the other arrays. And then there's one, two, three more arrays. So there's a total of four arrays going on here. Now let's let's do the same thing with the multi-dimensional version. For uh, tab tab i i less than parties multi-dimensional dot length you would think length but watch what actually happens when when we run this. I'm going to f10 f10 let's hover well let's initialize parties multiple multi-dimensional you would think length here would be three because there's three quote-unquote arrays in there, but length is actually 18. Okay, It's the actual number of elements inside the array. Even though this array is two dimensions here, it's holding 18 elements. So this dot length here isn't going to help us much because I want to index into the multi-dimensional version the same as we index into the jagged version. So what we have to do instead is say, uh, give me the length of the first or the zeroth dimension. Okay, And I'm not sure... There we go, and then for int j, j less than parties multidimensional dot get length of the first dimension. All right, the number of items in 
one row. How many items are in each row? I know all the rows are the same. I don't have to say which particular nested array I'm accessing here like I did with the jagged version. I just say, hey, I know all of those quote-unquote nested arrays are the same length. So give me the length of that first dimension. And then the logic is pretty much the same. I'm going to copy this, paste it, but I'll say parties multi-dimensional right here. And then we're not accessing an array that returns an array. Instead, I'm accessing a single array. So I'll do a comma there. That's how you access individual elements inside of a rectangular or quote-unquote multi-dimensional array. Let's control F5 this. You can see here's our first array up at the top. That's our jagged version. And then we have the multi-dimensional version down there. Let's try doing the same thing with a for each. Okay, I think that's... Hopefully this is driving home the differences between jagged versus multi-dimensional array. Let's try and doing this with a for each. Let's do the jagged version first. For each int array. Okay, remember parties jagged is a an array of references to other arrays. So I need to go through each one of those arrays. I'll say this row in parties jagged. And then for each int i in this row. And then console write i plus, let's do a space again. I'll add the curlies out here so we can insert a new line between each row. Control F5. There we go. The output's same as what we had before. But we're doing it with a for each now. Let's do the multi-dimensional version. For each int. I don't say int array because multi-dimensional doesn't store int arrays. It's storing ints. Even though it's two-dimensional, this still stores ints. So each int i in parties multi-dimensional cw i. All right, control F5. You can see, oh, holy smokes. Look at multi-dimensional. The for each with the multi-dimensional little bit heinous because we don't really know where one dimension begins and one dimension ends. It's just, it's a multi-dimensional array of data. Now, let me tell you a secret about multi-dimensional arrays. In this case, what actually happens, even though we get this nice syntax where we can say three by six, the data is actually being stored as a single dimensional array. In fact, we could even do the exact same thing the compiler is doing for us with a single dimensional array. I'll just say, hey, give me 18 ints, and it'll just be a single dimensional array, and then I'll worry about where the rows begin and the rows end. Let's control F5 this. You can see the outputs still the same. So the rectangular version, all it really adds for us with the for each, it doesn't add very much, but with the for loop, as you saw earlier in the video, we can index it using commas, and then each row has to have the exact same number of items in there. And you're not limited to just two dimensions. You could go three dimensions, four dimensions, five, six, seven. At that point, your brain's probably about to burn up. But, but there you go. That's the idea.